Hello friends of YouTube, welcome back to Mike Reads the World. Today's review is going to be just massive. It is, I just did a couple takes and it is just hard to succinctly summarize this incredible book from Thailand, Four Reigns by Kukrit Pramaj, who uh, the, the back of the book describes as Born in Thailand and educated at Queen's College, Oxford, was a true Renaissance man. He was a prime minister, politician, elder statesman, a classical dancer, outspoken critic, journalist, and writer. He wrote more than 20 books, many of which have become modern classes, classics. But what is especially astounding to me is that Four Reigns follows the, the whole life of one Thai woman named Floy, and that the first half of the book is our scenes like entirely following her life in the inner courts of uh of Thailand, you know, of the the royal courts in Bangkok and uh and they're all women, you know, everyone in her around her is women, all the interactions are between women, the conversations and the and just as a male myself as someone who's done some writing thinking about if I had tried to write a book with all, you know, female main characters and and they're all interacting and talking, like, I could not do it as well as this or as believable and and just fall in love with these characters and uh, and really have, like, an identity in my head of each one. And, and it just gets better, you know, as the book goes on. And uh, she leaves, you know, the inner royal court at some point. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna, this is a big review to try to get all of my thoughts about it. So I'm trying to make this first half of the video to sum up for people who are interested in reading the book. And then the second half of the video to be a bit more aimed at, um, you know, uh, just getting my thoughts out about the ending, including spoilers and all that stuff. So I will definitely warn you when I'm about to go into spoilers as usual and so then you can decide if you're fully interested in reading this book or just kind of or want more knowledge about how it ends and where it goes and what it's trying to say. So uh, yeah, before I do that though, I just want to introduce my house plant of the week. This is the third week I'm doing this. I've been doing them at the end of the videos, but now I'm doing it at the beginning. This is a maidenhair fern which I, I picked up recently. I really love these, you know, fine little leaves. And uh, um, she is uh, sitting here underneath the Rex Begonia um, on my lamp. So I hope that's a good spot and that uh, it will thrive. So uh, with that, we are going to start the review of Four Rains. Yeah, as I said, you know, it follows one woman's life. So I'm not going to call it an intergenerational saga. It's not an intergenerational saga. You could call it maybe a family saga, you know, because... But but it's all from the perspective of one woman. Um, from basically her very early childhood uh, and then, yeah, her entire life. Um, and her entire life happens to span, as you might expect... Four reigns, uh, which I don't know if these are the four kings that are exactly of this book. Um, but yeah, the book is broken into four parts, each named after one of the kings. And those are Rama 5, Rama 6, Rama 7, and Rama 8. So those four kings, uh, who are real historical figures, I assume, I didn't actually check that, but I, I assume they are really the historical kings of Thailand at this time. And from what I know, Thailand still currently has a monarchy, although I don't know if the current monarchy traces back to this exact family or how that works, but that's another topic. So um, anyway, the book has a, even though it's split up into four parts of, of these kings, um, it is definitely not equal. Most of the, like the first half of the book almost is in the first of the reigns and covers Floy's childhood. She is the daughter of a um, a minor wife of 
a a royal tie a man who has royal you know ties to the royal family of Thailand but not like a direct you know he's he's like the upper echelon I don't really know exactly but basically she's the daughter of a minor wife and this minor wife is like kind of resentful um uh and uh this this lord or whatever we'll call him is kind of he showers his other children with a lot more attention than than Floyd and uh, her mother. So her mother decides, you know what, I'm going to take Floyd and I'm going to bring her to the royal courts of Thailand to serve in the inner courts to, um, I believe it's one of the princesses uh, um, or, you know, somebody in the royal family, one of the women of the royal family, um, but not the main one, not like the main princess. Um, so there's this whole like royal hier hierarchy that you could understand. It's not really that important. Uh, what you need to understand is that Floyd is going to live in this sort of inner city, um, royal palace sort of thing in Bangkok that sort of functions as a city in itself almost. And, uh, the way it's described and the women are rarely, if ever going out of this circle until they get to their coming of age. And then they um, get their uh, their top knots. Uh, they you know they go they go through some coming of age rituals. There's a lot of descriptions of um, uh, just the dress and the uh, festivals and the rituals and the sort of um, details of the royal court, like the the. Uh, beetle boxes, beetle, be I don't know, there's like a nut that they all chew, and, and, um, I think it stains their teeth, uh, and it, uh, they, they, there's a lot of emphasis placed on these beautiful, ornate boxes, and, uh, just details like that. This, this book is all about, again, I use this word a lot, but slice of life of the royal tea of Thailand in this, this time period of like 1880s to 1920s, like pre-World War I, 1880s to pre-World War I. Um, so, and like, you know, there's not advent big adventures happening here. Like one of the biggest adventures is like they want a bicycle. So uh, a strange man gifts one of the girls a bicycle. There's a little bit of love intrigue, like Floyd, you know, Floyd makes her best friend in the inner uh, court, whose name is Choi. Uh, not to be confused with Choi, which is her sister at home. Some of the names are kind of similar, but there's not too many characters. The book doesn't overwhelm you with too many characters, and they introduce them slowly as they become sort of part of Floyd's family and friends. So I think it's very manageable, but... I mean, just the one thing that stands out is such vivid descriptions of all of this and and the nostalgia, the nostalgia for these times, the simpler times. And of course, I do feel it's painted in this rosy way, you know, and it's it's I don't believe that it's a perfect reflection of reality of Thailand at this time. The what it's like to be a, a farmer or a typical commoner is not, we don't get that perspective as much, though it does come in. There are certain characters who are merchants or, you know, end up kind of having to go mingle among the lower classes, and there's sort of like honor and, and some shame issues wrapped up in that. Um, uh, without saying too much, one of the characters' love interests ends up going off, you know, uh, leaving her for a merchant family um, sort of thing, but we don't really get the slice of life of the lower classes, we're getting the slice of life of Floy, who her whole life really is, um, of the, the privileged portion of society, um, but that does not make it a bad book, in fact, it is an amazing book for, to me, I mean, just the way it can paint and, uh, and really convince you of, this sort of mythical time and place when the royalty was taking care of everybody, loved everybody. There is a certain, I don't know how I want to say, and it becomes more apparent as the book goes on, but there is a sort of 
um, political bias, I believe, towards the old monarchy. Um, and I don't know how this fits at all into modern day Thai politics, but knowing that the author himself was a politician and a prime minister, I, it would be foolish to think that this book doesn't have some kind of political angle. That being said, like, you can read it without looking into that at all, and it is still a pretty incredible experience just for, just the way you can experience this woman's life. And I want to start with that without getting into sort of the political monarchic aspects. I'll just leave it at, um, it's clear that this author is, has this kind of conservative viewpoint, viewing um, this sort of simpler monarchic uh, past as a time where, you know, things were better and people had better values and, <clears throat> and that sort of thing. Um, and, the, and then later in the book, there's... You know, it even gets a little bit hyperbolic where he starts talking about, like, the the, the, king, the king goes off to Switzerland for a while, and when he comes back, it's like everybody is, everybody just feels this passion for the king. Everybody. Like, he says everybody, and I don't, I don't think it was everybody that was this crazy over the king returning to Thailand, but maybe they were. I don't know. I mean, I'm just... Uh, a stupid uh, United States of American uh, talking here, and uh, you know I've never reported to a king or a queen, so maybe other countries that have those things can uh, tell me what that sort of fervor um, is like, and if really everyone in the country in past times, uh, you know, got into it. So um, yeah, that's just my perspective, but. Uh, yeah, so without going more on in that, I just want to say, like, the way this book really is powerful, what's most powerful about it is just the way it, it mirrors, the like, how life is. And what I mean by that is, like, you know, people come in and out of Floyd's life like they do in real life. Uh, you never know, you know, when is the last time you're going to see somebody. And not because they necessarily die right away, but because they make a different choice. They go a different path in life. You never know uh, who's going to be your best friend at the end of things. You don't really, you know, things don't play out in this book like they do in your typical fairy tale. They don't, nothing plays out, in my opinion, for the convenience of storytelling or, or when it does, it is done very well and fits into everything that's going on. There's one point late in the book that I feel really drives home this sense of like the world is changing. And a big theme of the book, in fact, is uh, watching th this woman as she ages, watching Thailand's, you know, societal moral values change with the times, things become more money driven. Uh, you know, as as Thailand uh, democratizes, right, Every, and becomes more capitalist, and uh, everything becomes more about money, inflation, styles, uh, everybody in, in the rich upper classes is, is trying to, like, outdo each other in style, whatever's in style, which seems to be changing every other week. Uh, you know, culture is changing, now everyone wants to dress like the people from the north of Thailand instead of this traditional um, stuff that they've uh, all, always used. Now they're dressing like what she calls Laotians, right? Or Lao people. So I don't know how that all relates exactly, but uh, stuff like that. She, she's watching Thailand change, and um, but it's also... While it's losing, while it's gaining something, it's also losing something. So people have more freedom, more rights, but there's this whole complicated, you know, feeling of, uh, and, and kind of what happens to her sons uh, and daughters. Yes, Floy, at some point, we, you know, she gets married, she has kids, <clears throat> and uh, the, the paths that each of her sons and daughter end up taking all kind of show a different point of this tension. And her daughter definitely shows how, you know, 
feminism and, and women's rights starts to emerge in Thailand um, towards the end of Floyd's life and also kind of her her sons, the different paths they take, uh, show the, the changing times as well in different aspects, in the military, in the uh, in politics, and just in, uh, you know, work life, everyday living. And, and so we see all that. It's, uh, I don't know how well I'm getting it across, but there's just, this book is just an experience. You've got to take your time with it. It took me two months to read it, um, and I wholeheartedly recommend it. It is uh, it is definitely up there in in the best books that I've read for this project. Just from from an artistic and um, a standpoint of just being an immersive, well written book, and and. Uh, and I feel also written at a level that uh, at least the translation is brilliant. The translation comes across as something very understandable. There is Thai vocabulary, but like, look at this glossary. It's only like five pages. And to be honest, I never once had to turn to this glossary. So well done is the translation, and it was so easy to just Google a couple things that I didn't know what they were. Um, it, it wasn't many. It was like, and, and a lot of times it doesn't matter. You get the idea like, okay, this is a ritual, and, and you can tell by the context what it is. So it's just all, in my opinion, expertly done, and doesn't rely on knowledge of Thai culture necessarily to communicate the universal values that this this, uh, this, not universal values is what I'm trying to say, but this sort of, you know, universal aspects of the human condition, uh, to use a, a, an overused phrase, but that's really, I haven't found a better way to say it. Um, and, uh, that, that's what it does, you know, and, and that's what the good books to me in this project have done. And so, um, it makes me think too about just the idea in general of reading the world. I want to re reflect on that for a minute because like, a, yeah, this book was a big deal, took a long time to read. And just the idea of reading the world, like I, I can see an easy criticism and one that I make of myself frequently and have to overcome frequently is this idea of like, you're not deeply getting to understand every single country. Actually, you're not deeply getting to understand any country as you uh, read one book from every country in the world. But uh, reading wide is its own kind of depth. I believe in that. And that's why I keep going. And that's, that's what keeps me going. Because if you read wide, if you read books from every country in the world, and why I, I don't think it's necessary to read a book from every country in the world... Um, I'm doing that because it keeps me focused and it's like, it's just a cool project, a cool mission that keeps me, you know, focused on the next step. And, and this YouTube channel, of course, is great motivation for me to keep going. I honestly don't know if I would have the internal motivation to do this if I didn't have like, okay, then I get to make this vlog and then I can, uh, I'll someday be able to look back on this sort of thing. It's like, there's an architectural aspect to collecting all of these books and researching them and finding the ones you like and you find gems like the four rings um oh by the way there was a moment at the end of this book that that had me tearing up and it's been a long time since a book has done that i almost want to say like like that that, that got tears in my eyes you know i don't know on the beach did it and that was the second book i read for this project so it's been a long time um but yeah, it's just when you really get to know these characters and you really feel them uh, and, and then, you know, something happens to them, it's like, oh, it hits you. And that just didn't, it hasn't happened for me in a long time. So that was cool. Anyway, the depth. I was talking, <laughs> got totally distracted. Um, yeah, so reading wide is reading deep because you're looking for universals. Um, you know... Every culture has its particularities. I don't want to downplay particularities. Specificities and particularities are important, right? I believe that. But, you know, 
we only have so much time in life and and as somebody I consider that I, I think deeply about a lot of things, I want to find like an, okay, this book in Thailand, this Four Reigns, like the, this idea of a better time, this, this mythic portrayal of this nostalgic longing um, it almost creates a fantasy world that one can go into and yet one can relate to. Like the way this upper class Thai woman, as is written by a man, right, is remembering her, her um, is remembering her childhood growing up and the whole, um, just the little details and the little pleasures and sort of like those, those little experiences, uh, interactions with her friends, the festivals, the the um, tactile nature of the the betel boxes and and the other like jewelry and uh, craftsmanship of the women in the inner um, in the inner palace. All of that is so like I don't know. Like you feel like you're there, and I could and and could arouse these sort of same feelings in me as when you think of grandma's house or something like nostalgia it's it's just uh there's not a lot of authors that tap into it quite like this book does so that's my biggest thing is if if you really want to get that feeling out of a book this is one and plus all of just the history of thailand like it gets into you know world war one world war two when there's a japanese occupation um and uh in the kings of course the four reigns are kind of the the recurring um and in the four kings relationship to the changes that are happening in thailand in the world stage and how thailand is shifting toward a constitutional i suppose republic or uh whatever they get a constitution at some point um floyd's children you know, they go abroad, uh, they come, I totally forgot to do the store, the spoiler warning, <laughs> spoiler warning, although I really don't think I'm spoiling anything at this point, you know, um, but yeah, at this point, if you figured this was a book for you, it's like, yeah, go read it, I've said enough, so just a few additional things, um, I mentioned Floyd's children and how they take a different paths and, and, and so on. She marries somebody else from the upper classes, even though she came very close to, uh, to marrying another man at one point, uh, early on. Um, and he was the one that went off with this, uh, this, uh, merchant who was the daughter, you know, or the daughter of Chinese merchants and kind of just broke off the engagement with her. But she marries another man, they have some kids, and they send their kids off to Europe to study. And when their kids come back, they are completely changed by this. And those changes in her children, and as they interact and and uh, wrestle with this changing Thailand, kind of the, the children sort of reflect the changes in the country. As I suppose our parents, you know, look at us and see how times have changed reflected most strongly in their own children um and that's a that's a just a powerful experience that you can get from a book from this book if you've never had children like there's the going through floy being a parent and some of the feelings that she has as a mother and and one of the kids ot or oat i don't know ot is how you spell his name he's really a mama's boy like he uh, there's several parts in the book where it's like, you know, he's well into adulthood and won't get a job. And, and even his mom is like, okay with it for, cause she likes having him around. Um, and it, there's a really funny interaction that, um, I just want to read this out of context because it's, it's just kind of funny. Uh, if I can find it, she, she's literally just like, get a job. I don't know. It, I, I can't find it exactly, but it is funny. Um, anyway, but Ox, he, uh, he, he does struggle finding meaning. Like he studied literature when he was abroad. Um, 
and even though he's not, he can't really integrate himself into this new capitalist society, he's not pursuing politics like his other brother, he didn't go into the army like his other brother, um, his, you know, sister is just getting married to a rich guy, um, and so uh, if I kind of finds himself like not knowing what to do with himself and not knowing what's even right, in a way he reminds me a lot of uh, Hans in The Magic Mountain. In Thomas Mann's The Magic Mountain, he is, uh, you know, not averse to work. He just prefers, you know, comfort and pleasure. And he also, his, his age, his times, don't seem to be giving him a why. And that is a huge theme toward the end of the book. I mean, the end of the book, uh, I'm not going to give the biggest spoilers for anyone who has decided to still um, watch, but there is uh, just, there were some really unexpectedly powerful conversations in like the last four chapters. And uh, like when, when Floyd goes back to see her, childhood uh friend Choi who and Choi spends her entire life single um continuing to live in the inner palace which now by the end of Floyd's life has fallen into disrepair and she looks on it and thinks back to how it was just filled with splendor during her her days of youth and um and just this sadness and um the tragedies that have happened in her own life um the loss of her husband her house, one of her sons, and it, it's like she just realizes like every, all these things pass, and, and this sort of the Buddhist idea of impermanence surfaces here, but even she must say, you know, but that doesn't lessen, uh, you know, acceptance doesn't lessen the sadness, and Choi tells her, but even the sadness won't last forever, and you know, even the sadness is impermanent, and um, it's, uh, it, it's different though when, when she loses one of her children. Um, and I won't say who that is, but, uh, and, and there's really nothing that, that can change that sadness, but there's a, uh, one, one of the, ch one of the other, her other sons, um, decides to become a monk. And um, this is after he is imprisoned for years uh, for, he, this is the one in the military, and he's imprisoned for years on. Um, I hope you're not still listening if you haven't read this book. You should really read it. Now let me spoil this, but I got to get these thoughts out. And on is, is, you know, in prison for years. He decides to become a monk, and um, this is kind of like the final major family event of the book. And... Uh, it's, and, and as he is ordained as a monk, there's this reflection on, you know, are people still giving to the monks? Because a big part of Buddhism is that people to Im improve their good karma and get a better rebirth, from what I understand from this book, they offer alms, they offer basically free things or food or whatever it is to the monks. And they're reflecting on how people don't do this anymore, that compassion seems to be dwindling in society. And so, yeah, the, the, the final theme at the end of this book is like, um, it's not hopeful. There's not, cause it actually, the book ends with the virtually right, uh, after the dropping of the atom bomb, not too long after that, the book actually ends when this final, um, King dies and Floyd dies basically on the, at the same time that the, the final, uh, King uh, of the four reigns uh, dies. And so, but it ends with this dropping of the atomic bomb and this looking towards the future of uncertainty of humanity and power. And the atomic bomb is related to something in the Ramayana, a weapon that can destroy entire armies, like a massive death ray. And it's, it's, uh, it's also mentioned as like some sort of apocalyptic event that I believe is also part of the Rama, and it's not the Rama, it, uh, it's, it has another name, like the Rama, V or Rama, I don't know, it's, it's mentioned in the book, but it's basically the, uh, Thai version of the Ramayana. I'm just saying the Ramayana, because that's how it's in my head, but, um, 
yeah, it, I don't know if this apocalyptic vision, it's part of the apocalyptic vision, this world-consuming fire that's part of their, I guess, Buddhist uh, cosmovision, I don't know. But um, it's all kind of worked into the culture and religion, they're, how they're viewing this. So it doesn't leave you necessarily, like, hopeful uh, or whatever. It's just, this is life. This is life, you know? The, it ends in uncertainty. It began in, in times of well, what we remember with nostalgia and greater certainty. And it's it's incredible how reading this, it's like, I feel like I've really just experienced the memories of of a whole woman's life who never existed. And and this is the power of, of books, of literature, whatever you want to call it, reading, reading the world. And uh, so I just wanted to, yeah, share this and... Um, Hopefully it didn't spoil too much, and hopefully you'll forget any of the major beats. <laughs> I just, uh, this, this vlog is really more, I think, for myself to look back on, and hopefully someday make something more articulate and produced, or try to, I don't know, condense my thoughts a bit better, but for now this is the best I can do. I want to just keep reading, and I want to just keep making these videos. So... Thank you uh, once again. Much longer video, I think, than usual. Ooh, 30, 31 minutes. Yeah, this is a long one. So um, with that, my uh, maiden hair, Fern, and I will um, will uh, bid you a good night and uh, happy reading. I hope you pick this one up and enjoy it. Can't wait to see what the next book will be. I'm not even sure what the next video will be. There's a few I'm reading right now. So thank you again and have a good